Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to a new series on the channel with me, your host, Lego Marine, and it's going to be with the new DLC, Golden Century, that uh, that requires you to have uh, a few of the other DLCs in order for it to work fully, because that's the way the paradox is going. No idea why, but it's not good. Anyway, Castile. Castile, Azo, oh, it's very easy. Oh, it's very easy. It, they don't have a good air, uh, and they they don't have a good leader. Uh, they have an even worse air. Uh, their air is a zero zero zero, but uh, you don't really have to get rid of your zero 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 air because um, Castile is is hardwired to have a civil war. So instead of clicking the button to to disinherit your zero 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 air, just let it play out. Uh, when the the civil war happens, just move your troops somewhere else and fall to it, you'll still get the Iberian. It, it's more difficult to dodge the Iberian wedding now um, than it was before. So you just just let it take over. Just let it take it'll, it'll save a lot of issues with you. But yeah, very easy. Um, 1548. What have we got in 1548? 100 years, just 100 years and four years. Uh, after the start of the game, uh, we've inherited... Um, well, the Iberian wedding is fire. We've integrated uh, Naples. There's an event that fires that allows us to instantly integrate Aragon. Off the top of my head, I have entirely forgotten what it is, but uh, I'll be able to click the button and have an instant integration of Aragon. I uh, went down my mission tree as Castile, uh, integrate, not integrated, and um, grabbed Portugal in a personal union. So it's just, it, oh, it's very, very easy. Very easy. Very easy. Still in Scandinavia. Very, just very easy. Uh, Iberian Wedding fired in our favour, of course. I don't even remember having relations with uh, with Mr. Burgundy over there. But somehow we ended up with uh, with the inheritance. Uh, I, I did consider moving my capital over here, but they've added something in the game now that allows you to shuffle all the Dutch people off to your colonies which is splendid because now the people up here are pure castilians i'm not going to end up with the dutch revolts i don't have to move my capital up here and all is well um castilian britain yeah i jumped on them very very early got involved with the main um war that, that france kicks off and demanded pale because it's the only province from England that you can demand without taking a fort on their island uh, because it's it's on it, it's away from all of their forts it, it's the single province in Ireland doesn't have a fort in it so you don't get the, the minus 1000 for uh, being it being near a fort and then I think we just um, we, we diplo vassalized Leinster we fed all of Ireland to Leinster most of Scotland to Leinster as well integrated them at little bits and pieces as well what else? What else? We've just been allowing um, Portugal to do most of the of the work with colonising. Might as well. Every every colonial nation that he forms is going to come to us when we integrate him. In, integrate him anyway, and uh, we've just been concentrating on eating the natives. Splendid. And we moved our trade capital up to uh, the English Channel because because why not? Uh, we're also in the age where I was about to ditch France. Yeah, we picked up the Commonwealth. We're about to ditch France because we needed a way to get into France. I think that way was going to be through Tuscany. Declaring war on Tuscany um, brings in France somehow. Anyway, whilst we're in the age of... What age are we in? Where Castile gets its uh, tertios. Major Ref Reformation, maybe? One of those. But yeah, that, I, was look, I was doing this. I was doing this on Twitch, because that's where I've been. Apologies for my, my absence. Uh, but yeah, I've, I've been trying to get my Twitch stuff up off the floor. So it's taken, it's eaten quite a lot of my time. But I'm, I'm going to try and, uh, and cut back on that just a little bit. Just so I can control. Oh, good, good, did well. Uh, just so I can control my time a little bit more. It's a giant timorous as well. 
<laughs> cool. Uh, <clears throat> who's there? Ryzen. Yeah, Ryzen got big. Uh, so yeah, I, I was doing this and I thought, it's just, it's too easy. This isn't going to be fun. This isn't going to be fun for anyone. No one's going to watch this. Um, similarly with Portugal, I had a few backups with Portugal actually because um, I don't know, weird stuff happened. Weird stuff happened. What can you say? It's a paradox. Um, but similar with Portugal, we, we were just mega friendly with Spain. Uh, Spain guards my bum from the ravages of uh, the big blue blob as we colonize as many places as we can. As many places as we can. Capped off the coast of uh, the, the Cape of Good Hope to stop anyone going past us, but that's it's fairly useless now. It's fairly useless as of Dharma because anyone can buy provinces anywhere. Well done, Prado. Well done. Oh, also, why is there so much in Brazil? Well, because I was testing things out at this point. Uh, Portugal has more than 20 provinces and that's one of the the requirements for a Portuguese event. Portugal, Portugal gets a, an option to flee to Brazil. Now the requirements of fleeing to Brazil is to have five or less European provinces, which are fairly easily, you just have to eat someone in uh, in Northern Africa and turn them into a into a vassal although you don't really need to do it anymore they've taken away the increased coring uh, cost of Berber lands which I think was a mistake just making the game easier I don't like it I don't like it it's far too accessible now it's turned into Hearts of Ironfall anyway uh, also Spain decided to sell us this province so, we'd release Galicia, or I already have done, I don't know why it's flipped to this, I must have rage quit at some point. Um, rage quit because of what I saw. Uh, <laughs> but I fed this to uh, Galicia, I fed this bit to, um, to Fez. Down to five provinces, at least 20 provinces in, uh, in Portuguese Brazil, which there is. Uh, and then we get the option to flee to Brazil. What it does... <clears throat> what it does it it swaps the really really good mission tree of Portugal and you end up with the generic ideas which is pants whoever was on that whoever was designing that whoever thought right we'll do an upgrade but we're gonna keep it in Iberia yeah but one of these has an option to not be in Iberia anymore do we upgrade the mission tree that they got? Nope. Nope. We're doing Iberia. We're not doing Brazil. I, I don't get the... It's very, very short-sighted. You go from a great mission... A, a brilliant mission tree. Portugal has missions for all over the world. It's amazing. And then you go to Brazil and you're left with the, the three generic lines of generic ideas and it's no, it's not good. It's not good. Plus, you lose, you lose everything, Portugal. You lose everything. You have to recore all of this now. Either Portugal or Spain is going to pick up colonialism. It's usually Portugal. It's usually you. So you end up with a hundred of all the the points anyway, and uh, you you swim in points. You really do. You swim in points. You have the money. You have the the income. To have a, to employ good advisors, you swim in your points, and so you have to spend your points somewhere, and you usually end up spending your points on development of these provinces. Dev of twenty six, Dev of Dev thirty four, got twenty there. It just, if we compare that to historical starts, Yeah, it's a little bit different because all I could do, really, uh, that made sense, uh, was was to dev up my land, or maybe uh, Brazilian land. I think I did end up devving up some Brazilian land, but uh, but yeah. So you flee to port to uh, to Brazil, 
which is good, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, a little bit devs. Um, which is good, I suppose, because they've made it almost impossible to to move your capital to the new world because Paradox doesn't like fun, and it's ridiculous. It, you, it's ridiculous, utterly ridiculous. So you have to spend hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of points recoring land that you you just left. I, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. And you integrate the entirety of the, you. You become Brazil. You, you don't just shift Portugal to here. You become Brazil. Um, and it wasn't a fan. Not a fan. But again, again, boring. If you're going a colonial heavy game, it's kind of it's fun sort of when you're doing it. But it it can't it's not really fun for people to watch because it's quite slow. It's just you micromanaging where you send your next person or beating up on natives or you know X, Y, and Z. I think at this point I picked up an alliance with France and I was about to break an alliance with Spain, uh, and we were gonna between myself and France, uh, we were gonna start dismantling the uh, the, the Spanish Empire. But again, it's just it's boring. It's really, oh, just really, really boring. I thought, how about Aragon? Tell you what, we'll take Aragon and we'll turn it into the. No, I have to say that. Uh, we'll we'll turn it into the pirates. Pirates, please pirates. Here we go. Pirate Confederacy, the pirate confederacy of the Aragonese. And that was fun. I uh, no. It was. There's a lot of hoops to jump, jump through in order to turn yourself into pirates. Uh, and then once you, you've been turned into a pirate, then you're a pirate. It's a little bit fun. But only because you can say that you're a pirate. There's nothing really that amazing about being a pirate. You're just essentially a republic. You're a republic and immediately you get given 12? About 12 admirals? But you can only keep like two of them. So your first job has been uh, the pirate, pirate kingdom, pirate confederacy. Sorry, uh, is get rid of all you, all you admirals. Pirate confederacy, come around the kingdom, four hundred benefits, a diplomat. Well, that's only changed number of states. Naturally, it's, there's nothing special here. Republican cultural sufferance. That's all right, I suppose. Naval force limit modified plus fifty percent. Okay. Yearly Republican tradition minus one. Terrible for a republic. Why would that be part and parcel of being a pirate republic? I don't know. I don't know. May raid coasts. Interesting. It, it's all right, including coasts of countries with same religion. So you can you can raid everybody, which is a surefire way of pissing everybody off. Uh, chance to capture new ships. Utterly worthless. Uh, I suppose you could stack it with the the naval modifier of chance to capture enemy ships, pushing the, the chance to capture enemy ships quite high. Uh, and I don't know, that you could sell the ships to all the people that are pissed off of you raiding the coast. I don't know. Uh, maximum absolutism though of minus 50. Uh, 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 <coughs> wow, sorry. And uh, yeah. Yeah, not good. Privateer efficiency of plus 33%, uh, the Council of Captains and the Consolidation of Power are the government reforms I've chosen myself. Uh, it's just... It's... I think the best place, the best place for a pirate republic, if you started as Portugal and you rushed to, say, the Caribbean, or the Caribbean, depends of what kind of language you're into, and you rushed to to colonize the five provinces required, I think it might be six, uh, six provinces required, five provinces required for a colonial nation, six provinces required for a pirate republic, at the most, six provinces, so you could do it with five. And you split yourself and you, you played as, I, don't know, you, I think uh, the Portuguese pops out over here as Caribas, doesn't it? And you played as Caribas. Uh, you could probably turn yourself into a pirate confederacy very very easily and it probably have some worth uh, there's a lot as uh, as 
as the map fills out, as, uh, as I would say, uh, there's a lock trade that, that passes through the Caribbean. So lots of privateer efficiency here, and you, you're making a lot of money. But, uh, yeah, that was Aragon. I mean, you can start as Aragon, and you can get the the personal union thing. If you, it depends who you're playing. If you're Aragon, the Iberian Wedding will fire for you. If you are the player and you're playing as Aragon, it will fire for you. If you're the player and you, you're playing as Castile, the Iberian Wedding will fire for you as Castile, and vice versa. No one, no one cares about Naples. Don't, don't place Naples. They have some terrible ideas. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, problem is you have to release everyone. Aragon, you've got to release Naples, you've got to release Navarra. Navarra, it, it's a weird one. You Not only are you on landlocked now, so there's no way of actually escaping to the new world and coming back anything and everyone with your nationalism, CB. Uh, you have to actually stay around and contribute or be eaten. But, uh, but Aragon, as soon as the Aragonese dude dies, they pick up an immediate personal union on Navarra. Again, has to be released, has to be released, all of this has to be released, um, even Mallorca, until you get down to the six provinces, and then you can flip to a, uh, a pirate confederacy. It's alright. It's alright. But, yeah, I won't do it again. It's not worth going for it. Not really. Anyway. That brings me to uh, to who are we going to play? Who are we going to play in Golden Century? Who are we going to play in the Golden Century? I think we're going to take one of these fools and we're going to turn them into Andalusia, which uh, which has got its own mission tree, which has now got its own ideas. Um, all that good stuff. So I think we start with Morocco. I've never ever done a Morocco. Morocco used to be quite a big country, and uh, and I don't really like playing the bigger countries. Although saying that, it's got three vassals. Not only does it have the three vassals, which are, why has it got weird spacing here but not here? Products, please, please. Uh, <clears throat> not only does it have three vassals, but three vassals have your core land. Now, a weird thing with core land is you integrate it in a day. So, in the last update, if anyone played uh, Timurids, Timurids and they wondered why Transoxonia got integrated in a day and then Khorasan got integrated in another day and Afghanistan didn't take that long to integrate and Fars got integrated in a day it's because they have all your core land and your core land gets integrated in a day Morocco all this is yours therefore you you start the integration of uh, of Sousse of Marrakesh on a Monday it's done by the Tuesday of Sousse on a Tuesday it's done by the Wednesday on Tafelot on a Wednesday and it's done by the Thursday you'll you'll get where I'm going here. So it's very easy for Morocco to go from Morocco to Morocco. Very, very easy. Morocco's got his own uh, mission tree now as well. There's a way of uncovering this so you can get access to the squishy center of, uh, of the African nations, which is fun, I suppose. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know. I think maybe Granada, maybe Morocco. What have you got, Morocco? Cost of advisors with rulers cultured minus twenty percent. I've never, ever, ever, ever seen that. That must be new. Interesting. Idea cost minus ten percent. That would uh, blend really, really well with humanist. Uh, finisher for humanist is idea cost minus ten percent as well. So minus twenty percent idea cost. Hmm. And monthly piety minus one. Monthly piety minus one. 
So you've been naturally getting pushed towards legalism, which is pretty cool. Uh, being pushed towards as a as a, a Sunni nation, being pushed towards legalism, I think, is really really good. Uh, it's a it's a good engine for getting rid of corruption. Uh, there's a, a special button that you can press to get rid of two corruptions once you get up to a certain level of legalism, meaning that uh, you can just neglect to pay off any of your corruption, allow it to build, allow it to build until it gets to two, and then just pay it all off, just pressing a, a magical religious button. Trade efficiency plus 10% and caravan power plus 20%. You, you won't work much with caravans here unless you actually got into Africa, I suppose. Trade efficiency is always nice. Yeah, trade efficiency is always nice. Galley combat ability plus 20%. Majority of our ports are on the Atlantic side. Yeah, it might come in useful. It might come in useful. Although this that has the crossing, this is an inland sea. This is inland sea. If you have a, if you have a, a, a heavy ship, boy, like a, like a, like England or France then you ought to station your heavy ships here and try and tempt the galleys out into this sea tile. In this sea tile, the galleys have lots and lots of uh, good combat modifiers. Here, they're just galleys with no combat modifiers. Privateer efficiency plus 15%. That would be useful. That would be really useful because the majority, the bulk of the trade that happens here, the bulk of the good trade that happens here, it's severe and Genoa. You don't have control of that. All that. It might be better privateering with Morocco. I know they get access to raiding coasts, which is really good. But still, might be worth uh, privateering instead of steering the trade. Strange. I've not had a good privateering game. Since we played as the Canites, where we were raiding coasts. That was pretty cool. Land maintenance modifier plus five. Plus five. Land maintenance modifier minus five percent. And cavalry combat ability plus ten percent. Any combat ability, whatever, is good. Anything that makes our, our, our forces cheaper, again, is good. And monthly autonomy change of, uh, of minus 0.5 percent. Anything. Anything that brings. Your monthly autonomy is down, is good, is really good, especially as they have linked the conversions of provinces directly to the autonomy of the provinces. If the autonomy is high, it's going to be cost. It's going to cost a lot to uh, to convert that said province per month. I have seen astronomical numbers in terms of uh, conversion, conversion of provinces, like fifty ducats a month. So, galley combat ability probably fairly weak. The cost of eyes with rulers culture probably fairly weak. But as long as you were willing to micro a little bit, then yeah, you could probably find it useful. Naval force limit modified plus twenty five percent. Not bad. Mirror ghosts is a big one. Um, it brings you more sailors. Not that you care. Not that anyone cares. But it also brings in lots of money. Lot lots of money. And this is. Fairly rich land. If you can try and force your way down this coast, you'll be able to raid even more and more and more. That would be fun. And attrition for enemies plus one stacks really well with defensive ideas to uh, to push the attrition for enemies even higher. <clears throat> I'm sure there are some modifiers down here for extra attrition. With it being desertous. Yeah, so maybe Morocco. Morocco and Andalusia. There's quite a few people doing um, Granada at the moment. Core creation cost minus 15%. Not bad. Yearly prestige. Ridiculous. Stupid. I, I don't like yearly prestige plus one. It's not enough. That's on my power modifier plus 10% is good. Construction cost plus minus 10%. Sorry. Is, uh, is good. Why do I need to see this? I'm fairly certain I've turned all of those off. But no. Uh, domestic trade power plus 10%, trade steering plus 10%, not bad. National tax modifier, religious unity plus 25. 
Religious unity plus 25%. Hmm. Idea cost minus 10%. Hmm. Hmm. Torrents of Heathens plus three. Granada and ideas stack well with uh, Humanist as well. Has the same minus 10% in terms of uh, Humanist finisher, but it also has the Torrents that stacks well and the Religious Unity, sorry? Yeah, the Religious Unity that stacks on top of the Religious Unity that you get from humanist which would allow you to eat more of iberia without taking the religious penalty or it would allow you to take a bigger chunk out of it um allow for the the province autonomy to come down to a decent level where you could convert it for relatively cheap amounts hmm. i don't know now we'll go morocco we'll go i'm sure i've done granada before Fairly certain I've done Reconquista. Re Reconquista. We'll do Morocco. Um It'd be interesting to see if we can we can do the Andalusia before Iberian wedding happens and Castile might go down his individual um mission tree and pick up the personal union mission on Portugal. Be, uh, be interesting to see if that all comes together. Uh, also, Morocco has a mission to open up this area. I'm not going to say it, otherwise Google's going to shout at me. And uh, get into the, the the gooey insides of the uh, the African nations. We'll see. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll do Morocco into Andalusia in the upcoming campaign apologies again for for not being on uh, quite as often oh, not uploading videos as often as I could or should I've been lost in uh, in twitch because this is me talking to myself in a room uh, with twitch I'm talking to people and one of them is uh, is more engaging than the other I find myself getting a little bit lost in twitch and, um, and and I, I find myself streaming until three and four o'clock in the morning. But yeah, you know, it's great. It's great. But then I kind of lose a day. So anyway, I'm hoping to get an episode up per day. I'm going to commit to that for at least for at least the next month. But please give me Christmas day off because I'm not a heathen. But anyway, I've been Lock Marine. As always, you lot have been amazing. Hope you're looking forward to Morocco into Andalusia. I am. But until next time, do take care.